come back to um, a very important part of our presentation. In fact, we've saved the best till last. Now this is a very intense treatment. It takes a fair bit of equipment. It takes two trained therapists to apply it. But you know what? Cancer is a serious condition. And so to conquer cancer, you need to take some serious steps. So this might seem like a bit of work, but the beauty of this cancer treatment is there are no side effects. Your hair won't fall out and your fingernails won't go black. And it is being filmed and it was very difficult for me to get this treatment and I am happy to share it because it is not mine to keep and we have seen some incredible turnarounds with doing this treatment. Now um, Joshua has agreed for me to wrap him even after doing those compresses on his chest yesterday. And while he's wrapped up in the wrap, I will be able to talk a little bit more about it. There are times in the demonstration of this treatment where I'm going to have to move very fast. And there are times when we can slow down. And if I'm unable to explain everything as we go, um, I definitely, while Josh was wrapped up, can enhance on it there and we can also take questions. Now the recipe is two kilos of sodium bicarbonate. And it's about a third of a cup of lemon juice. and five litres of boiling water. It must be boiling because it cools so quickly. And you will see how I apply this treatment that we are not going to burn uh, Joshua. So I don't know if you can see, you might like to stand up or come a little bit closer, but I'm going to um, mix this now. I've got the two kilos of sodium bicarb in the water, in the bucket, and it's just sodium bicarbonate that you buy from the supermarket. And what I'm going to do now is gonna, I'm going to put one litre into the bucket. And I'm going to stir it. Anyone who wants to sit on the sit front row can just chuck all that stuff in, a, in that basket there. And then we're going to put the lemon juice in. And when you put the lemon juice in, it speeds it up a little bit more. And then we're going to put the rest in. Don't put it all in at once because it might foam right up. There it comes. This is a great treatment to do on this cold, windy day. So I mix it a bit more and then I put See what happens when you put it in too fast? Settle down, mix. There we are, it's settling down now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my first towel in and the best way to fold them is like this and you'll see why. So you dip it in and you swish it around a bit so you've got a good mix and then you squeeze it. Now you don't want just your average gloves for this because it's boiling water. Now as I showed you last night, all screwed up it'll hold its heat. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this over here, Joshua's going to come up and when he tells me he can bear the heat he will get on it. He will put his arms up and I'll be wrapping it around his torso 
and then Reen, my helper, will be covering it with this woolen blanket which will hold its heat. So Reen, if you could come up because we're going to move fast. If you could come up please Joshua. And when Joshua's here ready, if you could just take your shirt off. Some people can handle the heat more than others. So you just tell me when you can handle that heat. How's that? It'll cool quickly. Um, a bit cooler. In fact, you'll be right. You'll be right on that. Okay. Okay, that's good. Arms up, arms up. It cools very quickly. Okay, and we'll put that on. Okay. Other way around, like that. And it's very important, arms down. How's that? Nice. Now, nice. Arms up a bit. Very important that no air get to any, because that'll cool it. Now, did you see what he said? Nice. Do you know some people, they can't bear it, they can't bear it. Some people, straight on it. So, different people can handle different temperatures. See, we're relaxed now. Now, what I'm going to do now is wrap the leg. So, we move fast to keep it warm. And we're going to wrap one leg and Reen is going to put a garbage bag on that leg. Then we're going to wrap the other leg, same thing, then the arm, then the arm. So his whole body is going to be touching the sodium bicarbonate hot towels. So now I'll do the other one. Swish it around because the sodium bicarbonate tends to sink to the bottom of the bucket. I went into the supermarket this morning and these gloves said heavy duty cleaning. So this one. Now what, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch Joshua's leg and he'll tell me when he can bear the heat. Okay, And I'll just move this up a bit and if you could just put your, we had a practice run this morning. Okay, put your left leg up, maybe not so high. And you tell me when you can handle the heat. Yep. Now very important that you wrap that round, okay. And that comes right underneath, pull it right underneath. Okay, down. And then we wrap this around. Up, that goes down. And then we wrap this blanket up around in here. Now you can relax. Nice? Nice. He's smiling more than he smiled yesterday. <laughs> I'll do the other leg. You see what I mean? You don't want your great big thick tails. You want the old thin tails. <laughs> The towels are too thick, they take up too much room and you've got lumps of wet towel here and there and it takes up too much of your water. So um, I think I can do this facing you. So we're going to do this again, just let me cool it a little. Okay, you tell me. But it cools very quickly. Um, that's fine. And this is also a thicker towel. A thicker towel holds the heat a bit more. So now this side of the blanket goes over. Okay. This blanket comes up. And to help keep the warmth in, you got another garbage bag? Yeah. You need another one. Oh, yeah. Here we go. You're better with no gloves. Other end. So what we do to keep the feet warm, just put the feet in 
Now we're going to do the arms. And before I do the arms, I'm just going to explain to Joshua, your arm will come up like that, and I'll wrap the arm. And then I'll get Joshua to put his shoulder up, and I'm going to poke the hot towel down under him, and then he'll come back. Because at the moment, his torso is covered with the hot towel up to about here. So with this towel, I can put one corner down and take up the rest of his shoulder. Now when you're doing a wrap on a lady with breast cancer, one corner will go up there and the other corner will go in and over, so she's well covered there. We get nice and warm during this treatment too. Now what I usually do, this looks like a sad old towel but it's the best. I, I, let the, I let the towel just sit there, that'll stay warm. And if you put your hand out straight and you tell me, too hot, too hot. do a little dance and try again. You can't heat it up but you can cool it down. Okay. Um, in. Okay, I'm um, down. And now shoulder up. Yep, right up. Now you tell me how's that? Yep. That's fine. And pull this up and right, up and around. Good, good, good. Down. That's right. And then this can go on the chest. And again, you must never let any of the... Can you do that one? Yeah. Make sure it, you can't have any towel. Yeah. No towel exposed. Any towel exposed, the air will get to it and it'll get cold. Now, no one likes wool on their face, so we sort of pull this back a bit. Must keep the patient happy. So now we do our last one. and. I might have to have my back to you while I do this. You swish everyone around so you get as much sodium bicarb in the towel as possible. Sorry, I'm going to have to go here. Now this last one, it usually, not as hot, okay. Arm up, can you tell me? Uh, too hot. Too hot. A bit more of a dance. Yeah, it's fine. That's fine. Make sure it's wrapped right around the arm. At this point, I get these off. Under there. This goes right under. Okay, down. And then this one goes right down the front. And then this blanket goes over, and then we get the other blanket. I'll put this one first, then that one at the top. And usually put a hand towel underneath, so put your head up, so that it's not nice, the prickly wool. So you can just put a little towel there to protect against the wool. And you want to make sure that the person doesn't feel like all this is going to fall on top of them. And this is a microfiber cloth, and they're really good at keeping the heat in, but it would be no good against the wet, because as soon as that get wet, it chills. Are you warm? 
He's warm. <laughs> now for someone who can't hold their heat well, I'll put a big doona on top. No more blankets, those lovely woolen blankets that might feel like they're crushing him. And then I always pray. So we're going to pray, we're going to pretend, and Joshua doesn't, but we're going to pretend that Joshua might have a form of cancer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for Joshua. Thank you so much for bringing him here. Thank you for the knowledge of the bicarb wraps. I pray your healing power will go through this treatment and make it impossible for cancer to survive. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you know, even people who don't believe in God are very happy for me to pray for them. So, it takes a little bit of work, but how long did that take? Ten minutes? It's just a bit of prep. So don't throw away your old thin towels, they're perfect for this sort of thing. And you usually leave the person here now for one hour. So what is happening is the sodium bicarb is infiltrating in through the skin, it's coming into the tissues and it's causing a very alkaline environment to be created in this whole body. Now at the same time, Joshua has stopped, this is hypothetical, Joshua has stopped all fruit, he's not having many carbohydrates, he's having lots of vegetables, lots of legumes, seeds, nuts, we're giving him a, a litre of green water to drink through the day, he's having some maybe olive leaf and grapefruit seed extract, herbs to knock back the yeast in his body, he's um, having one of these one day and then a hyperbaric chamber treatment the next day. He's having his steam baths every night. Can you see how we're not, we're hitting this from many different sides. So we will usually leave um, Joshua here for one hour and the staff check on him every 15 minutes and most people fall asleep because it's like that wet sheet pack. It's moist, it's warm, the muscles relax. And um, Every 15 minutes the staff will come in and say, do you need a little water? Do you need a bit of cool on your head? Um, tending like that. I say to the, to the guest, if you hear the door open and you're half asleep, just keep your eyes closed because the staff will see your eyes closed and go straight back out. But if you need your nose scratched <laughs> or your forehead scratched, um, you know, or a little water, we, we can do that. So this is the treatment that we can offer at Misty Mountain. I had a lady come and she had five wraps. She did everything that I just explained. She had breast cancer. It was a small lump in her breast. They wanted to cut it out and also do chemo and radiotherapy, but she chose this instead. She was late 50s. She continued to do the program. After six weeks, she started to eat uh, a little bit of sourdough, spelt bread then. She started to um, eat uh, some Granny Smith apples and grapefruit. She slowly eased a bit of fruit back in. And then she, she emailed, no, she actually rang me eight months later. She said, Barbara, I've just had a test from the doctor and I don't understand it. I said, read it to me. She read it to me. I said, Elaine, your cancer's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Isn't it funny, all that language. How often would you do this? Elaine stayed for two weeks and we did, we do either five wraps in one week or three wraps and two hyperbaric chambers. When Elaine came, we did not have the hyperbaric chamber treatment. So some people would prefer to have a wrap every day, so that's five days a week, or they might prefer to have the wrap, hyperbaric next day, wrap the next day. Sometimes people... Okay, Joshua, how are you feeling? Very comfortable. Very comfortable. So that's what we say. We, you know, we have it with Joshua, but where are your knees? Are they knees? Yeah. They're knees. <laughs> we often put a little pillow under the knee, so we get the person very, very comfortable. They must be comfortable to be able to lie like this. But it is actually very nice. But can you see how it is a, um, a specialised treatment in that you have to know what you're doing because if we didn't move fast and those towels got cold, that would be very uncomfortable. And that's why we use the garbage bags. They're not actually touching the skin. They're just keeping all the warmth in. And he's got two woolen blankets under him. And I'm thanked to honour. I just love this really thick, 
thick woolen blanket, it just keeps that warmth in. So you have to have wool to do this treatment. The only other thing you could do is wrap the whole body in plastic, but you know, wool's nicer because it, it does breathe a little bit. And that's what some people do is they'll put plastic <coughs> over that as well. But these blankets are so thick and good that that's, that's, all, that's all that you really need. Yes? You said about sodium goes into the body tissues. Hmm. Alkalize. You see, in the stomach lining, there's sodium bicarbonate. And the sodium bicarbonate is the stomach lining so that if any um, stomach acid goes through, it neutralizes it. And your pancreas releases sodium bicarbonate because as the stomach acid and food comes out of the stomach into the duodenum, the duodenum is an alkaline environment and it needs to be alkaline for the other enzymes to work, as you'll see tonight. And so the pancreas releases sodium bicarbonate to neutralise that. Sodium bicarbonate is a, a natural substance. Some people say, well, can't I just drink sodium bicarbonate? All you would do is neutralise your stomach acid. And you need the stomach acid to break down the food. But to get it into the tissues, you do this. Or the other thing that neutralises and alkalises the, the tissues is green drinks. So we also are giving green drinks. So basically I say to people, cancer hasn't got a hope in your body once you do all this. On Saturday morning, I'll discuss one more aspect and that is the mental aspect. If we're doing all this to someone and they're angry and bitter and are harbouring unforgiveness in their heart, this isn't going to do a lot. So the mind is an important thing to do. So you see it's a whole, the whole picture. I had a lady, we'd wrapped her up, she had breast cancer and um, we left her for 15 minutes and we left the door open and the wind shut the door and she started to get very afraid and very anxious and I had two staff members checking her and one thought that they would checked her and the other thought the other checked her so she went over half an hour, actually three quarters of an hour with anyone coming in and when they came in she was quite beside herself. So we quickly, quickly dealt with that and we just quickly got her out and we just said we'll just give you another one on the house because you, know, you shouldn't have been left. Most people are fine, most people just fall asleep. But these two staff members misunderstood, they thought. <laughs> anyway, um, she talked to me later and she said, you know, it's really interesting because she said, I am not like that. I don't get anxious and I don't get stressed. So I laid there analysing, why am I freaking out here? And she said, when I was a little girl, my father used to beat up my mother. And she said, one day I was so, you know, so hating the noise of the mother being beaten up that she ran into a bedroom, got into a cupboard and shut the door and she could not open the door. And it was a long time before anyone found her. So she said, I realised that when that door shut, all these emotions came up from when she was a little girl. She said, you know what? I can have a wrap now and you can leave me for an hour. I'm OK. I analysed it. I worked out what it was. So as soon as she knew what it was, she thought, oh, oh that old thing. <laughs> Interesting. One lady, I wrapped her up and she said, I can't, I can't stay in here. I said, why not? I can't move. I said, you can. Have you noticed that everything's, everything's wrapped separately? So if Joshua wanted, he could move his arms down there, he could move his arms up there, he, you know, he, you can move. I said, you can. And every, everything she put to me, I said, it's all right. It, 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 it. I'm getting claustrophobia. I said, your sister's here. She'll be with you the whole time. So every fear she brought up, I was able to negate it. And then I said, by the way, why are you doing this? She looked at me. For my kids and my husband, I said, good. <laughs> anyway, her sister was there and she stayed the hour. The next day, about 10 minutes before I had to do the wrap, I said, are you ready for your wrap? She said, no. She said, do I have to have it? I said, no. <laughs> and there was this bit of a battle, <laughs> not a battle, but a, you know, we were and I stood there and I said, let us know. I mean, there's a lot of prep for this. She said, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs>
and she was perfectly fine. In fact, the third rap, she just jumped in and everything was perfectly fine. You know, and that's what I'll talk about tomorrow. Sometimes the things that we think are the most fearsome are actually not fearsome. Are not fearsome. Uh, sometimes it's our thoughts. But um, most people look forward to this because nice. Yeah, yeah, much better than that stuff yesterday, eh? <laughs> See, it's with that hot and that cold, but this is this is actually a very pleasant treatment. What yes. What does the hyperbaric do? What does the hyperbaric do? In it's actually inhaling it and some into the skin. Um, Henry's law. It is a basic science. Law. Henry's law states that under pressure, more liquid will more ox more back. Henry's law states that more gas will go into liquid under pressure. That's Henry's law. And in a hyperbaric chamber, pressure is built up, and so the gas is oxygen, and we're pumping in pure oxygen. Oh, it's not here. We're pumping in oxygen, you've got pressure and oxygen's been pumped in and the liquid of course is blood. Now do you remember, I've done this a couple of times in the lectures, so I'll recap because I know that I'm guilty of information overload. There's the cell. Remember the glucose goes in and there's a 20 step pathway and this 20 step pathway gives us two units of energy and the end result of that pathway is pyruvate and pyruvate gets fed into the eight-step pathway and the eight-step pathway gives us 36 units of energy. Now every single cell in the body runs on energy. What makes the difference is oxygen. There's no oxygen up here. In fact, this pathway produces energy by the process of fermentation. This is where cancer cells run. So if you, if you pump the body full of oxygen, you're actually forcing cancer cells to get down to there. And these cells, remember what they consume? 15 times the glucose, because this cell here is a very fast cell. This cell is a very slow cell, or pathway. That explains it. They developed hyperbaric chambers for uh, divers. They've got the bends, because air is 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen with about a 0.3 of a carbon dioxide. And when they come up too quickly, the nitrogen can't all be released and it goes into little bubbles in the joints, and that's the bends. And when they go into a hyperbaric chamber, because they pump that oxygen in, basically the nitrogen just dissipates and is breathed out. And they discovered that wound healing, healing of any sort, increases when oxygen increases. So that's a high. That's right. If you're going to go to all this effort, <laughs> it, it, basically if I had a friend and I lived here and I was a housewife and, or I worked and I had a friend that had cancer and I'd heard about this and I'd get a couple of friends together and say, I think we can do this. So we'll say to our friend, we're willing to go to all this effort to do these treatments on you but you've got to play your part. And if the lady says, oh no, I like my sugar, I'd say, okay. That's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a choice. But if you've got a friend who's, you know, she said, I'm going to do this. You know, the effort she puts in, you know, encourages you to put this effort in. Uh, not necessarily. You know, you could do it the day after she started. This gives a mighty boost to the healing in the body. It can actually tip the scales. I think I told you about the man who owned the strawberry farm, prostate cancer, he was here for two weeks. His wife and daughter were gung-ho and he was just all right. Well, we did five of these. One week, five the next week. They didn't do it when they go home because it's, it's not an easy treatment to do, as you can see. But the two weeks at our health retreat gave it a mighty kick start and then he continued all the other bits and pieces. So it's not that you do it every day. Dr. Tullio Simoncini wrote the book Cancer is a Fungus and he injects the sodium bicarb straight in. Well, we can't do that and we don't do that, but we can do this. So it's part of the treatment, yeah? What if they were using um, chemotherapy? Could you, would that be helpful? 
if they were using chemotherapy, it, it would almost be a waste to do this. It's like cutting the skin. I'm just keep putting a band-aid on cutting it. You wait till they're finished and if they... Ideally they don't, but I understand when some people choose to. But basically you want that gone and then you want everything else in place and then this can be a, a, an additive, yeah? Yes, I've often been asked that. If you will notice, and you can have a look in the bucket now, there'll be a bit in the bottom, and every time I put the towels in, I had to swish, 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 because it just all falls to the bottom. So if you were to have a bath, you'd have to go like this the whole time. <laughs> and it doesn't quite do what, you see, all the towels. And what you've also got is you've got a bit of steam happening here, and the steam's also causing it to penetrate in, yeah? Yeah, you, you could certainly try it. You'd put about two kilos in and you can go to the produce store and buy 20 kilo bags. And we didn't really have time to do that so we just bought a whole lot of little packets. I think they're 500 gram packets. So we put four and a half packets into, into that bucket. Now Joshua's eyes are open now but a few minutes ago they were closed. I think he feels like fully asleep. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're going to unwrap um, Joshua now. Sorry, we can't, can't leave you here. One hour. Oh yes. In fact, what I find and what people tell me is the warmth can sort of go like this. Get very hot and then ease a bit. Are you as warm as you were when we first wrapped you? Yeah. He's as warm now as he was when we first wrapped. This is, I'll tell you, I'd like to have this great big thick blanket at my health retreat. It looks like it's been washed in a hot wash and it's gone all tight. They're the best. <laughs> don't throw this out on her. And, and, oh, bon, don't let anyone take this, okay? And if any of your grandchildren aren't interested, the church will be interested. <laughs> it's a very good one. So you want, you want um, good equipment. Okay, that's a good question. This outside blanket, there's no need to wash. Um, the ones that are touching his skin, absolutely we wash because not only is the bicarb infiltrating or going into his body, but he's also perspiring, so some waste is going to come out. So you definitely want to wash those blankets. Yep. Oh no, oh no, because we want that waste out. Otherwise, next treatment, his skin will absorb the waste again. So you have to be very careful how you take this out because you don't want um, your guests to chill. So I've got a few towels here we can wrap Joshua in. I'll just get a couple here. What we have at Misty Mountain is we have um, robes and so you take one out and, and cover it, take one out and cover it, cover it, and then as soon as they get up you quickly put the bathrobe around them. Would you mind giving me that basket empty? Thank you. Empty. Yeah. So as soon as that's off you cover that with the blanket so he doesn't chill. Thanks very much. The bags we use again. Quickly cover, see? So that he doesn't chill. Just once, yeah. Did I miss? <laughs> and so, um, The 
I want him to chill, so I quickly put the towel around him. I'll get you another towel. I've got another towel here that you can put around you. Okay, put that one around your waist. Got it? Yep. We really look after our patients there. Now what, um, the best thing, Joshua will not be able to do it because there's no shower here, but the best thing now, and thank you very much, Joshua. <laughs> now the best thing now for Joshua, we get our guests to go into a, a warm shower, not hot, not cold, and they get a face cloth and they rub. They rub over their whole body. We're going home now, so Joshua can do that when we get home. And then get dressed. Now some uh, guests will lay down and have a sleep. Some of them have slept the whole time in here, so they don't feel like asleep. It's basically whatever they feel like doing. So that's the, so like the hydrotherapy treatments, it's a bit of effort, but it's well worth it. And as long as you've got all your equipment, it, it's basically not that long. So this, this blanket here, I will wash. Can you see the damps come through? And that damp will be some sodium bicarb and that damp will also be some of his perspiration. So, so you wash that one, but usually this outer one you can just air. So thank you for your attention. Time is up and look forward to seeing you here tonight. And it doesn't look like there's as much room as in the other place, but I'm told that this seats 160 people, so we will have enough room. So I look forward to seeing you tonight when we, we begin our journey on travelling through the gastrointestinal tract. First lecture, I'm going to have a look at what happens all the way through it, and then the second lecture, I'm going to go through it again, but how you can heal it at every stage. So I look forward to seeing you tonight. Thank you.